Next question came in two weeks ago from Philip. Philip says, I need help with raising. Pro hey, where's Dan? Hey, Dan, you get this one. You ready? Sure. <laughs> hey, the reason I'm asking you is because, like, how much private money uh, have you and uh, Crystal raised, like, since we've been hanging out together? I think she's, or we're sitting somewhere around nearly six million, something yeah. like that. It's a lot. Yeah. You ought, you ought to be able to handle a, a private money question, I would suppose. So Philip says, I need help raising private money, knowing best rate to offer private lenders and if we should be looking at bank loans with low rates to refinance and pay off private lenders for houses <laughs> that we want to keep for the long term as rentals. So okay. his question really specifically then is, should they be looking at bank loans with low interest rates to refinance and pay off private lenders for the houses they want to keep long term? Okay, so, wow, good question. Um, it depends on how we're purchasing these homes. So if we're, if we're purchasing homes uh, subject to, and we've got a, a private lender on it to do uh, some small rehab, like mini rehabs, if you will, on them, uh, then what we do is we get the owner to refinance, drop the payments down low, and we collect the cash on that refi. So we get that back to us. So that's, by the way, I think that's like a fourth paycheck on that one, but uh, uh, which is great. But uh, um, yes, if you, want to, if you want to get a lower payment and you think you can successfully do that, again, you know, problem is you're going to be using your own credit. And Jay talks about don't use your own credit and don't use your own money. So I don't, we don't put anything we don't put anything in our business in our name. Everything is, is financed through unless it is a foreclosure that we purchased. Um, the, the offer of, and you're gonna, this is convoluted, so you're gonna have to clear that up for them. But the offers that we make to our private lenders, we're very consistent with. And uh, we, we ask them initially what they feel would be a good deal on, a, on their interest rate. But typically, we'll sit if it's a hundred thousand and below, we sit at ten percent. If it's uh, if it's above a hundred thousand, then we go with eight uh, percent. Obviously, if it goes up to one million, which we have a couple of those, then we drop the interest rate even farther. But we're very consistent. I think we sit at about five percent on a one million dollar uh, and above. So, so, but make sure because you don't want your private lenders talking. Jay has all his private lenders sitting on a stage together. So if one mentions one percentage and the other one looks at them really funny, then Jay is going to have problems with that. So he's very consistent with that across the board as well. Uh, any other question there? Yeah, well, you said something that I don't want people to miss. And it could have, I mean, you said it like that, and it could have gone very easily like that. Okay. So everybody tune in, okay? Like, stop looking at your Facebook. I don't want you to miss this. So play out one more time, a little slower, that you have somebody else refinance the house. Play that out for everybody. How did, what's that look like? Sure, so when we go to purchase these properties, and, uh, and again, if they're not a foreclosure that we bought outright to do a full-blown rehab on, if it is a subject to, and again, Crystal's the queen of subject to, so she can't virtually reach out and slap me in the back of the head, so I'm okay with this. Uh, if it is a subject to purchase and we look at it and their interest rate on that might be 6%, we'll just say that that's what they were sitting at, but they've got an op or an ability a capability to reduce that by refinancing it. So they reduce the payment, which makes it even sweeter for us because now our monthly, our, our monthly income on that, when we turn around and sell it as a rent to own or whatever it happens to be, will increase. So we're going to have passive cash flow coming in because of that. Now we convince, and it's a great deal for them, but we convince the, the sellers to us to go ahead and refinance, we pay any of those costs that are incurred on that, that's taken care of on that. We pay those, and right now, most of these folks don't charge anything to refi, like rocket mortgage and all that kind of stuff. Get them refinanced through there, lower their monthly payment. If there's cash ability to take out on it, 
then we work that into the deal where that cash comes right to us. So if, if, if they're able to, if the house is worth $250,000, we're going to pay for an appraisal. We're going to get that bank in there. We're going to say, okay, let's refinance that, get cash out of it. If they only owe 150 or they only owe, owe we'll say 70, 70, we had one that was $75,000 and it, it appraised out at $350,000. There's a lot of cash sitting in there. We don't want to wait two, three years on this. We want to go ahead and get that cash now. So we get them the refi, we get the cash out, still staying down within our percentages, you know, 60 to 75%, whatever we said, low in the value. And we take that cash and hold on to it. So we're going to use that cash, reinvest it back into the property to do the rehab on it, whatever it happens to be. We don't even need a private lender because we just got that cash to do that. If there is a private lender that we were going to be using on a property, and we were able to refinance it, then we pay that private lender off and now they're out of the picture. We're not paying that you know, 8% or 10% or whatever it happens to be. Well, that's a very um, advanced, brilliant strategy. What um, incentive, the, so obviously you're, uh, you're buying this house subject to the existing note. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume everybody in the academy knows what we're talking about. So you're buying it subject to the existing note they're obviously can't get it refinanced unless they've been current on their payments. And you and Crystal have been buying a ton of subject to deals that are current. They're not behind. Mm -hmm. They're current, they're current on their payments. So obviously, uh, Crystal's got the talking points down pat on convincing someone to sell subject to and they're not even behind on their payments. Right. That's a whole nother discussion. But since they are current, <clears throat> they're not behind, they got good credit. What incentive would they have to go through, even though you're paying for the refinancing cost, what incentive would they have to go through the whatever, uh, not pain, but to go through the trouble, for lack of a better word, of doing the refinancing? I mean, are, are they are they most times when they're going to refinance the house and sell it to you subject to? Are they, is that one way of getting them cash that they want over and beyond mm -hmm. what they want to sell it for? Absolutely. We get them cashed out quickly that way. So normally when, you, when we're purchasing subject two, we've got to wait until we get a tenant buyer in there. The tenant buyer's installed. They have some seasoning on them, you know, a year, maybe two years max. They're in there and then they're able to get their own mortgage because we go ahead and put them in free credit repair, that kind of thing. We're, we're getting them there, got them qualified. They get cashed out. They, they purchase the house. The cash comes in and we hand the, the previous owner the cash that we agreed upon. And this way with a refinance. So we already worked out all the deals on it. Already understand, hey, you know, this is how much you're going to get. We agreed upon it. Then we talk about the refi. So we say, okay, since we've got this, now let's talk about a refi. We're going to walk you through it. We're going to help you with it. You're not going to have to deal with it all by yourself. Some of these folks, and, and I'll breeze over it quickly. Some of the reasons why is because, well, primarily, primarily because of COVID right now, but they're, they've lost their job. They haven't missed a payment yet, but they know they're going to, and they don't want to wreck their credit on it. So we step in and we can buy very, very quickly, literally within seven days, as long as we get that title search done, we can start making payments. <clears throat> so boom, they don't even miss a payment on it. You can't get that with a realtor. So Realtor said, hey, you know, I believe I can sell it in a month or we've got we've had properties sitting there for six months. And Jay can attest to that. You know, it, it's a fickle market out there. It just doesn't. I mean, it, they don't sell like hotcakes like the realtor is telling you, oh, I can sell it in two weeks or six months. You know, that kind of deal. So these folks have no tolerance, no threshold. They have they have no I mean, they have a big pain point because they've left already or they're leaving Maybe they found a new job someplace else and they've got to move or they're moving in with mom and dad because, you know, they just can't make the payments anymore. So, so this strategy, just to recap, works, A, when they're current on payments because they can't refinance unless they're current. B, um, they want cash over and beyond. They want to sell you the house over and beyond what they owe on it. So they're not selling it to you for what they owe. So one question just came in that I think we sort of answered it. The question is, why would they even do subject two if they can refinance? 
And the reason they want to do subject two is because they want to, they want to sell the house and they, want, they don't want to be responsible for payments because maybe they're getting ready to lose their job. Right, Dan? Right, right. There's, I mean, there's a million different ones, uh, different reasons behind it. Uh, you know, whatever. But <laughs> I don't know how going to go here. We could have one session just on reasons why people sell subject two. Right. Uh, really <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I so, just think that uh, the primary reason is that Crystal knows what to say and how to say it. <laughs> that's right. That is the primary reason. She she's good <laughs> at at finding the pain points and uh, having a having a conversation with people. Um, uh, she's she's just very very good at that. So. Yeah.